The Infantry Squad Vehicle, or ISV, is changing the way the Army moves its troops. Lightweight, fast, and built to go places heavier vehicles simply can't. For airborne infantry, that means squads can maneuver farther, faster, and more flexibly than ever before. Earlier this year, senior Army leaders brought a challenge to Applied Intuition, a Silicon Valley company specializing in autonomous systems. The mission? Take commercial driverless technology and turn it into a combat-ready military vehicle, fast. Within just 10 days, the team delivered a fully autonomous ISV, paired with a Humvee mobile command post. It was a glimpse of what happens when military needs meet Silicon Valley speed. Here at this JRTC rotation with the Applied Intuition team, Autonomous ISV. They came to our offices and gave us 10 days to retrofit a military vehicle and put on it um, Applied Intuition's technology, our off-road autonomy stack, and our vehicle operating system, Vehicle OS. The key is to make military vehicles smarter. We enabled them getting here faster and quicker, helped them get through a lot of the red tape that traditionally slows down getting the tech into soldiers' hand. Uh, we used a contract mechanism called a CRADA, or Cooperative Research and Development Agreement. It has the ability to stream its camera data across the world wherever a commander needs to be watching it. It has embedded target recognition models so it can see if there is threat in the area and stream that data back. It could also detect any maintenance issues and any uh, fault with the vehicle itself. Uh, low tire pressure, engine cooling, engine temperature problems. It'll alert that there is an issue, uh, show the soldier how to repair the fault that it has. Maybe putting a vehicle operating system on it so that other vendors can incorporate their technology but also adding MMPs or multi-mission payloads. So like a soldier might be like, I want a robotic mortar system, or I want to be able to do CASAVAC, or I want to be able to use my ATAC and call up the robot to come pick me up. So these are all different avenues we're investigating. You can send the vehicle uh, on its own to scout a route to see if there are any issues there before you send a unit. We're trying to bring in these new techniques, these new technologies, and working with the soldiers so they have the same capability they have on their personal technology in the vehicles they have today and the equipment they're using. We want their kit to be the best kit in the world. The ISV is an official Army program of record awarded to GM Defense to meet validated operational requirements. Built on the Chevrolet Colorado ZR2 platform, it uses 90% commercial off-the-shelf parts. That combination of proven automotive components and military-grade engineering makes it both rugged and easy to maintain, while keeping costs and complexity down. Off-road performance is where the ISV shines. Chevrolet performance upgrades give it the ability to climb steep inclines, cross mud and sand, and handle rough terrain with ease. So the infantry squad vehicle is essentially a high mobility vehicle that's meant to transport troops and equipment from A to B, get you as close to the X as possible so you can dismount and fight, take the fight to the enemy without traveling dismounted for too long for, uh, with a lot of equipment on you. I'd say it allows us to fight lighter. So being a light infantry division, we rely on our mobility on foot to fight. Uh, but given that, we also have a lot of weapons capabilities like AT4s and Javelins that it's, it's tough to fight dismounted with. So having these vehicles, you can load up all of your sustainment, all of your weapons, and then get off as close to the objective as possible and still fight light. All the heavy things, right, that we carry to include our Ruck, um, Javelin systems, AT4s, Carl Gustav, the Stingers, I mean, you name it, all the stuff that we have to carry with us to fight with now in this Lisco war, uh, we can expeditiously just stripe the, strap that down uh, to the ISV with just some 550 quarters, some tape, and if we need to use it, cut it off real quick and uh, engage with it. And it kind of it takes the weight off the soldier's back because uh, you can also match your rucksack on it as well. For JRTC and my uh, platoon's purpose, it has definitely helped us. Mainly for us, I've uh, been trying to um, place off of roads and get into a uh, hide site so that way we can stay undetected, hidden, and we can easily deploy uh, our drone assets to do recon. So it maneuvers a lot better through the wood line than I thought it would. It definitely maneuvers better than a Humvee. 
it's been getting stuck less. If you were taking an ISV into the battle, you wouldn't take it all the way up. You'd usually, you'd probably pull it into the ORP, displace, and that gives you less distance to cover on foot. So you're more energized for the battle. You have less weight to carry on you and you can just focus on taking mission critical items into the battle with you. The one thing I think should change for LA SV or should be implemented is a turret. So that way there's a 360 degree of cover and it's not limited to people on these sides having to stay watch. And it uh, allows us to have some more capability of defense. Yeah, we're good to go. I'm Captain Wagner. I'm Hound 6, commander of the Strike Company for 2-2 Infantry. The whole Strike Company purpose is to find, fix, and attrit our enemies before our rifle companies within the battalion ever make first contact. So, in order to make that possible, we've been filled with these new ISVs to give us an added mobility capability. And so far, it's worked out great for us. These vehicles are able to travel in rough, rugged terrain. You can climb rocks, you can get through mud, you can get through snow. It handles well on ice, even without the chains. Uh, overall, pretty satisfied and happy that we have this new mobility platform. Additionally, you're able to unload and load people and uh, equipment rapidly from this vehicle because there are no walls or anything. You can load nine people into this vehicle very rapidly, much more rapidly than you can load and unload a, a LMTV or a high back Humvee. Then on top of that, there's no waiting involved with this vehicle. You turn it on, you can step on the gas, you can get where you need to go. The seat belts are simple. The seats fold down, fold up when they're not in use. And you can stow everything that you need on the racks in the vehicle. I foresee in our upcoming force on force operation here at JMRC that these ISVs are going to allow our scout platoon and our lethal unmanned systems platoon to navigate into areas where the enemy won't be able to, or at least not very easily. What that's going to do is give us an added advantage in survivability, being able to get into those hard to reach places, or we can still observe the enemy, whether that's through our UAS platforms or through our scouts, eyes and optics. Firepower is built in. A top mounted weapon station can carry M240s, M2s, or MK-19 slash 47 grenade launchers. Side swivel mounts allow additional machine guns, like M249s or M240s, giving squads flexibility to bring the right firepower for the mission. Adaptability extends to deployment. The ISV can be flown inside C-17s or C-130s, airdropped with low-velocity systems, or sling-loaded beneath a UH-60 Black Hawk. Stretchers attached to the vehicle's rollover protection frame using crab claw brackets, allowing wounded troops to be moved quickly, even under fire. Power comes from a GM Duramax 2.8-liter turbo diesel I-4 engine, paired with a six-speed Hydromatic 6L50 automatic transmission. It delivers the torque and reliability soldiers need to move across rough terrain with a full load. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more content like this.